Hello and welcome to this beginner's introduction to using Final Cut Pro X which is the latest iteration of Apple's video editing software. This is intended for people who are new to using Final Cut Pro X, maybe people who have come from using Final Cut Pro 7 and are confused about the new terminology and the layout or maybe for people who've never done any video editing before and want to learn how to use the program. So we're going to take you right from the ground and work our way up. The aim of this tutorial is to help you understand what libraries, events and projects are and to help you understand how to import media, how to set up a project and how to begin editing on the timeline. So kind of a catch-all beginner's guide to editing in FCPX. So the first thing to understand is a little bit of terminology. Final Cut Pro X uh, talks about libraries. You have to open a library when you start a project. A library is another word for kind of the master file. It's the folder on your computer where all of Final Cut Pro's uh, project is going to be saved. That can be the media, the timeline, everything to do with it. So to open up a new library we go to where it says open library here, we click it and we can see here's some libraries that I've already used today uh, but we don't want to use one that I've started. We want to make a new library so for, to do this we go down to where it says new and we're going to say here what we save our library as. I'm going to call this promotional film master library and we could call it whatever we want and I'm going to save it here I'm going to save it in my documents folder on my computer and I'm going to click save and once it opens up there we go we can see now it's opened up in the top left hand corner here the library is there and we can click the little arrow and just drop down and we see that there's two things already in the library there's something called smart collections the folder and then there's another line here like a purple icon that says 270815 this is what we call an event think of an event as a folder or a collection at the minute it's called 270815 uh, we could double click it and we could rename that to whatever we want so I'm going to call this um, ooh, I'm going to call it college exterior shots now most of the time you'll use these to organize your clips and they're quite handy because you can put a collection of clips all into one folder that are similar so it's very easy for you to go through and organize your work now at the minute you see the event college exterior shots there's nothing there when I click it there's nothing that comes up that's because at the minute there's nothing in there we need to import some media in there now I've got some video footage that's saved on an external hard drive so what we're going to do is we're going to import that so click import media and when we click import media it brings up the media import window very handy on the left hand side we can see all the devices and hard drives that are attached to my Mac at the moment in the middle here we've got what will be a video window I'll see if I click this you can see there's a video and we can play that video there on the screen and down here we've got a hard drive we see at the minute I've got Caesar selected so everything in my hard drive that is a video clip we can see here and we can click on all the individual clips that are on my hard drive there and we can scroll down and at the minute what we want to do is I want to find some exterior shots of the college for the promo video so what we will do is I wonder if that should be easy to just quickly scrub through a footage I know I've got some on here somewhere so I'll just quickly go through and click until we find one of the exterior shots on here ah there we go that'll do fine fantastic there we go so here we go we can see there's an exterior shot of the college and I want to save that to the event on the right hand side we can see that now I've got this click select clip selected we can add that to the existing event college exterior shots or we could create a new event and name it something else but I don't want to I want to add it to the existing event and we go to import selected this blue button down here and it'll import that one clip I've got selected and we see now in the college exterior shots we've got the clip and there's the exterior of the building that's the clip I wanted however what happens if we want to import uh, some different media and we didn't want it to go into the college exterior shots well what we do is we go import media file import media brings up the import media window again but this time I want to import several different shots and I want to import some that are to do with uh, the radio course 
here at the college where I work. So we'll scroll down until we find some clips there for the radio course. Here we go. Now, before we only imported one clip and we imported it into the event we already had open, this time I'm going to import more than one clip at the same time. So to do that, hold down Command on your keyboard and left click all the clips you want. So I'm going to import all of those there. You see they're now all highlighted blue. We don't want to add it to the existing event College Exterior Shots. What we want to do is make a new event, a new folder, a collection. So we go create new event in Promotional Film Master Library, which is our master kind of folder for the whole project. And we want to call this event Radio Course Clips. And same as before, then we go down. Now we've set up our new event that they're going to go into, and we go Import Selected. And we see now, in our library, we've now got a new event called Radio Course Clips, where all my radio course clips are, and we've still got the college exterior shots there. So, there we go, that's how to create a library and events, which are collections of clips, how to import clips into those. Now what we need to do is we need to actually start assembling our edit, the important part. To do that, what we need to do is we need to make a timeline. Now Final Cut Pro calls timelines projects. So down here at the bottom we can see it says new project. So I'm going to click new project. Now we're going to call this uh, our promotional film timeline. And there we go, I've just typed in what that timeline is going to be called there under project name. Where it's going to be saved is under the event radio course clips. I could choose college exterior or radio course, that's fine. The video properties option, at the minute what it says is we'll set the video properties of the timeline, that's to do with its resolution and the size of the video and it's going to set it based on whatever the first video clip is in radio course clips. Now how this is useful is what we want to do with our timeline is make sure that it's set to the same resolution as the video clips we're editing and that we want to export the final movie in. I know that I've shot this video in 1080p, for example, because of the camera that I used. So I know that I also want my timeline, my project, to be set to the same settings. So I'm going to make sure that I've got it set to the first video clip. However, I could choose custom and set my timeline's resolution to whatever I wanted it to be, 1440 by 1080, 1920. I could set it to 720. Maybe if I'm editing in 4K, I could do that there. I could set the frame rate here to 25 or 29 for this particular one. Uh, that's more useful if you're in the UK or America. Obviously, America works on 30 frames a second, whereas the UK, we still film in 25. But like I said, I'm going to set it based on the first video clip. We can also do stuff like mess with the audio and render properties for the timeline. But we're just going to do a very basic edit. So we're just going to click OK. And a timeline will appear down here. And we should be able to see it as well in the top of our radio course clips event our collection there. Now to start assembling stuff on the timeline, what we could do is I could click on one of my clips in the event. I could hover my mouse right over the center so you see it turns into a little hand icon and then click and drag it down. Or what I could do if I only wanted to take a certain part of a clip, for example uh, this clip here, we can see that we start on this gentleman taking his headphones off, then we cut halfway through to this other guy at the mic. If I just wanted to take a selection of that, so for example when he's talking into the mic but not the bit here, then I could set an in and an out point, and that's saying the start and end of the bit I want to take. To do that, I move my little timeline, I scrub along with this red bit until it turns, I press I where I want to start the clip, move it along, and press O where I want to end it. And you'll now see that a yellow box has appeared just over that particular segment of the clip there, and now I can drag that down. Now at the minute, I can't really see stuff on my, my timeline, on my project, because I'm quite zoomed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move along this little plus and minus magnifying glass here to zoom into the clips a bit better. There we go. And I'm going to drag all of these so they're a bit closer together. So let's just drag them over. Now. It might be that you're editing right now and you're going, how come you can move all your clips around all over the timeline but mine are all bunched up together and there's no gap between them? What that might be is, when we first open up Final Cut Pro, we've normally got the select tool selected and when I drag in a clip in the select tool, what it does do 
is you see it drags them back to back you can't for example if you've got the select tool selected there you can't drag a clip onto the timeline at the end and leave it there did you see how when I let go it automatically zoomed along that's good because it leaves no gaps in between your clips but as an editor I find it very frustrating because I like to arrange my clips together in little islands and fine tune them so I like to have a little bit of back black space between different things on my timeline at times so this is very aggravating to me it's very easily fixed all you need to do is click this little drop down menu and choose position or you can use the keyboard shortcut of P on your timeline and you'll see that the icon of your mouse changes to the same icon there. Once you do that you'll find it's very easy to move them around. It's at this point then that you can start arranging your clips. If you've got them already trimmed by using the in and out points like we just did on this clip up here then you might not need to do any fine tuning. However, if you start a clip and you go actually I don't want that part of the clip there, I want that part, then what you can do is hover your mouse over the start or end of a clip until it turns into that strange icon there, and then click and hold down, and you can drag along your clip and shorten it to whatever part you'd like there. And that's it, the very basics of editing, you can now arrange your clips on the timeline in the order you want. You've seen how we can very easily trim down clips to get rid of parts of clips we don't want. And that's the very basics of video editing in Final Cut Pro 10, an absolute beginner's intro to setting up a new project, importing video clips in, and then arranging them on a timeline. Thank you very much. It's worth noting that with Final Cut Pro 10, you don't ever need to save your work as such because it does background rendering. Whenever your timeline is rendered 100%, it will automatically save your project. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be doing a series of more detailed video tutorials on Final Cut Pro 10 on some of the really cool features of it over the weeks to come, so stay tuned.